budget. It's from, if you please stand up, Tashinga Musinga Rabwe. Good evening, Treasurer. Um, with $80 billion said to be cut off from health and education in the states and territories, are you starving the state so that you can effectively raise the um, GST and deflect blame from your government? No. <laughs> Which is, of course, the accusation of the states. That's exactly what they're saying. Of course. Well, they will. I mean, it... Well, how so are they these going, sorts of things happen they, all the time. The, the question that they're asking is how are we going to replace the missing $80 billion? Well, I would argue that the $80 billion was never funded at any rate. And why? Uh, just to clarify what the $80 billion is. Um, it, it, Julie Gillard and Kevin Rudd signed deals with the states. And they literally threw money at the states in relation to hospitals and schools. In the case of Gonski, uh, they pulled one point. The previous government put $1.2 billion out just before the election. So there was no Gonski money at all for Queensland, Western Australia or the Northern Territory. So after the election, we said, look, it's unfair. We committed to four years of Gonski. We're putting an extra $1.2 billion in, which actually means we've put more money into Gonski than Labor ever did. I'm just going to go and to... I'm going to go to point, let, let me go to what the questioner is asking, though, and that is whether the states will end up being well, forced into a position where they have to agitate to raise the GST. That's what everyone wants well, to know. Well, that is a matter for them because they receive every dollar from the GST. They receive every dollar from the GST. But what happens is, at the moment, the states run the hospitals, the states run the schools. We don't run one hospital, we don't run one school. We run one hospital in Tasmania. But we don't run the system. And all we're doing is we're going back to the same taxpayer for additional money. We don't run them, but we're taxing them and then giving it straight to the states. So the fundamental question is, uh, if you run an area of government, shouldn't you raise the money to pay for that area of government? Okay. I'm and having, so, said that, all right, yes. having said that, we are continuing to increase above inflation funding for hospitals and schools as far as you can see. So we continue to increase the funding for schools and hospitals off an even stronger base than what the previous well, Labor government was Not according off. to the states, who say that they're going to be down by more than a billion dollars starting from July, well, July I, 1. Well, that's just not right. Well, not, as that, I is said, their, that is their argument. Well, yeah, can, I, can I just argue uh, one quick question, one quick follow-up, and that is, why was such a fundamental shift in state-federal relations not forecast or even talked about in your budget speech? Oh. Why in my people... budget speech? Yeah. Oh, well, I wish I had an hour to give the budget speech. Uh, but that, but was, I didn't... That, that is the thing that's causing you most grief, and you didn't even mention Do it in the budget so? speech. I'm not sure that it is the thing giving us the most grief. I think, I think there's a few other things uh, in the community. But, look, uh, this is something that we, we, we have to resolve. Colin Barnett was right. This is not an emergency. Uh, we can sit down and work this through. We have a process that we've put in place with a review of the Federation and a review of taxation arrangements, and whatever comes out of it, we are taking to the Australian people at the next election. OK, I'm going to move on from uh, that issue. We've got a question from Len Joyce. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, go ahead, then. Mr... Sorry. Um, I wasn't expecting you so quick. Um, the, uh, the, the Australian economy has been ruined over the last five years, uh, five or six years, by profligacy. Uh, have I said that right? Uh, leaving us with one billion dollar interest bill a month. Um, now, the, the continual stupidity of the opposition parties uh, in Parliament and what they're saying and what they're going to stop, uh, what option can you take? Um, we don't want to resort to hope or divine intervention. Uh, what, uh, what can we do to get through that? How are you going to face that? You mean how are you, how are you going opposition. to face opposition in the yep. Senate? Yep. All right, go ahead. Well, I think we've got to win the political argument. Uh, that's the starting point. Now, uh, you, if you're asking me, I mean, I'm... I am frustrated at the behaviour of the opposition, I suppose, They'd say they were frustrated at us when we're in opposition. Uh, but uh, Labor is now opposing $5 billion 
of the savings and cuts that they took to the last election, they're now opposing and blocking in the Senate. Five billion dollars of their own cuts. It's not only fifteen not billion. Only, not dollars. only Labor is it that's going to be blocking a lot of these well, initiatives. Well, that's true. Fifteen billion dollars of initiatives that we were upfront with the Australian people about before the last election to reduce government expenditure, like getting rid of the school kids bonus, which is hard. But we were upfront. Tony Abbott said it in the Parliament: we've got to get rid of this because it's funded by the mining tax. We can't afford it. Labor is opposing that. Labor have now said they're opposing $18.5 billion of new saving initiatives. All it does is make the job much harder in the future and the pain much greater in the future. So quick